Welcome to Backroom Talk. I'm uh, excited to talk about some training programs. We've got four different uh, programs ranging from high in volume to lower in volume. Uh, so first one's going to be the 20 rep squat program. Would you do it again? Uh, never. <laughs> no, I would never do 10 by 10 again. It's very, very taxing. How do you make the call? What is right for me? What is right for my client? You just got to you just got to feel it out, Georgia. No. We just did a what a 50 minute, 40 minute somewhere yeah. somewhere around there mm-hmm. conversation on learn our X and we we broke down different rep ranges. To listen to more backroom talk, be sure to subscribe. Learn to design personalized programs with the OPEX system of coaching by heading to opexfit.com. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Backroom Talk. I'm Georgia here with Carl. How's it going, Carl? Uh, pretty good. How are you, Georgia? Good. I'm uh, excited to talk about some training programs. Yeah, it's always good to talk about training programs. It is. That's like a kind of a thing that we enjoy. It's why yeah. we're in this fitness education world, right? Yeah, yeah. It's always fun to look back at because um, some of these I haven't, I haven't even thought about some of these programs in quite some time. So to kind of dig back into these and think about the times that I've done them and some of them I've given to clients in the past and uh, some successes and some failures in some of these programs. Uh, So it'd be good to kind of recap those and and talk about them. And there might be some people that are listening that are considering doing some of these programs or currently doing some of these programs. So it could be beneficial. Yeah, we'll convince you to either do them or to not do them, depending on the program. I think we're going to say it depends for every every program. Yeah, well, that's but, typical. Yeah. That's typical. We'll so uh, we've got four different uh, programs ranging from high in volume to lower in volume. Uh, so first one's going to be the 20 rep squat program. So this one is uh, it's a high intraset volume squat program. Uh, you do it one to three times per week for four to six weeks or so, not longer than that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it was was popularized by methods uh, used by the bodybuilder Tom Platts. Yeah, very interesting program. Um, so Platts, Platts didn't actually. So he didn't. He didn't like invent the twenty rep thing. The guy. I don't. Have you ever seen a picture of Tom Platts? I don't think so. I'm gonna Google it right yeah, now. Pull up, pull up Tom Platts really quick. And as you do that, Georgia, I want you to tell me what sticks out. Like, what's the what's the thing where you're like. Oh my God, this guy is different because... Those are some ginormous quads. His legs are massive. Uh-huh. Yeah, so he he popularized the idea of doing really high volume knee flexion and squatting. So this program was derived from some of his methods that he used in his own training program. Um, so yeah, Platts has some massive legs. Um, so the intention here is to increase muscular endurance. It's to increase muscular size, of course, just looking at Platts. Um, some good hormonal spikes to come along with d- dumping that much volume in, inside of a single uh, set. Uh, and for some, uh, it increases the ceiling of getting stronger. And the idea behind this is mentality, right? Like, because uh, when we get into the house, well, let me get into the house and I'll hit the mentality. So houses one to three times per week. Um, in execution, I don't know if I would ever go, go more than one time per week. Uh, with this, uh, I can kind of see like, uh, you know, two times spread out, uh, but three times is a lot. That's a lot of volume. Um, good luck recovering from that. But best practices in, in the how is one to three times per week. Um, in execution, it's one challenging 20 rep set, adding five pounds per session in progression. Uh, usually, And this is what makes it different. And I think this is where a lot of people that have done the program or are considering doing the program, uh, this is where they get it wrong. They're just like, oh, I'm going to choose something that I can do for 20 reps. No. (laughs) So these are actually called uh, breathing squats. That's what we call them when we, when we, we, this is what I called them when I went through the program. I, I didn't make that up, but they were called breathing squats because you can take as many breaths as you want, right? So the goal or the idea is to take something that you can do maximally for like 12, maybe 15, and it's to extend it out to 20, right? So for most people, that's going to be somewhere between 40 and 60% of their one rep max. So you're not just putting, you know, a load that you think you can do for 20 reps on the bar and just doing it for 20. You're grinding through, right? Like you're doing 10. You're like... (laughs) kind of adjusting a little bit you're taking some some breaths and then you're doing another five and then you're taking a couple breaths and then you're finishing it off with those five right so you're you're uh you're crawling your way to 20 reps you're not just like bouncing those things out um you keep a few reps in the tank per set though right so like 
I know that I just said you're grinding it out, but you should be able to grind out a few more reps. Like you don't want to be like falling over on rep 19 because you're not going to be able to progress that thing. Um, and this should be obvious, but you're performing this at the top of the session. Have you done it before? A few times actually. Yeah. Yeah. What was your experience like? Um, man, my legs got bigger. Yeah. Yeah. My legs got bigger. I didn't get any stronger. Um, uh, mentality wise, it was just like, it, it sucked. Like it was really hard. Um, so like, you know, putting on, you know, 400 pounds actually felt better after doing that with like, you know, 300 pounds. Um, so yeah, it was, it was very, very challenging mentally. Uh, legs got bigger, um, just not sustainable for me. Um, and just like my body type, like doing 20 tough back squats is very, very taxing on my system. So, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty good, but not sustainable for me. Would you prescribe it to any of your clients these days? No, I did it. Honestly, the only reason I really did it was for like, uh, just exploration and just like curiosity. Um, yeah, no, I, w- I wouldn't give it to anyone and yeah. and I'm not working with anyone that, uh, that's like trying to like maximally grow their quads or anything like that. We need to like figure out like these really advanced techniques to like give them a little bit of a boost. Uh, if I had someone like that, I'd consider it. Um, but no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give this to anyone right now. Yeah. I've not ever approached 20 rep squats laid out like this. I've done 20 reps before, but I also like figured out pretty early on that high volume squatting is not my friend either. You've yeah. seen my squat it takes a lot out of me and I end up with bad knee if I uh, yeah. do a bunch of it. So it's not in my program. Yeah. I think I had some like, uh, some hip, hip knee stuff, uh, after a few weeks of doing it, I kind of just like fought through it like an idiot and, uh, nothing serious. It was just like nagging for a couple months, but, um, yeah, definitely, uh, Definitely wouldn't advise it if there's no reason to do it, just like any program. Um, but it's, it's, uh, I would, I would, if, if someone could do it safely, I, I think there's some, some, some good stuff that comes, comes from just like hitting a very, very challenging set like that because it's, it's a set. That's it. Like you're not doing like three sets of 20. It's just like you're doing your 20 rep back squat on that day, right? So I know I said it's a ton of volume. It's a ton of volume when you consider the intensity that's needed to get the uh, proper dose response from it. Um, but yeah. German volume training is uh, our next program. So I think we've talked about this before here. Yeah. Um, you guys are probably familiar with it, but it's 10 by 10 program that was popularized by uh, German weightlifters in the 70s. Why would you do it? Uh, increase size through that mixture of volume and intensity. So it takes some of the, not it, it doesn't take some of the same ideas from the 20 RM program or the 20 rep program, uh, but it shares some of the same, uh, there's some carry over there, right? Where it's like, you're choosing loads that are intense enough to like, be like, oh shit, right? And the volume is ridiculously high, right? So intentions to increase size uh, through that volume and intensity. Um, yeah, I'll get through like my thoughts after I go through the how, but you go three to four times per week usually. Uh, you choose a body part or an upper lower split. So uh, the classic Poliquin split is uh, chest back day one, and then day two you're hitting legs, and then day three you're off. Um, day four your shoulders and arms. Day five you're off. Day six you're back to day one, right? So it's like not a day by day split. It's just like you're following that. And then another way to do it is to go. Uh, it's an upper lower split, so it's uh, upper so it's upper or lower uh so upper lower off upper lower off and then you're just continuing that cycle um obviously everything is 10 by 10 and it's antagonist in nature in terms of supersets so everything's supersets because just imagine doing 10 by 10 in straight sets like rest is going to have to be very long and you're going to do like two exercises per session so uh usually you'll see uh two main lifts so uh like for an example would be chest and back you'll have uh 30 degree incline close grip bench press at 30x1 10 by 10 rest 90 seconds to two minutes and then you're going to uh back and on back you're hitting like uh you know a chest supported uh dumbbell row 10 by 10 blah 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 so those are like your two main lifts for 10 by 10 and then you'll do like an accessory chest and accessory back and then you're out and then the next day you're choosing legs you're hitting uh something quads and then you're hitting something hamstrings and then accessory 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 and then you're out um so yeah so that's the program i know you've done this one 
I've done this a few times. Yeah, I've done this a few times. Would you do it again? Uh, never. No, <laughs> no, I would never do ten by ten again. It's very, very taxing. Like, like it's like uh, I don't want to. I don't want to be dramatic again and say it's like this is a dangerous program, but it is dangerously taxing. Like that is a shit ton of reps, right? It's a lot of volume. Um, GVT just has a lot of junk volume, in my opinion, especially for an, a more advanced lifter. Um, and that's why Poliquin popularized the advanced GVT where he's like, ah, let's not do 10 reps. Let's do five or six reps times 10 and then progress that down to three reps times 10. And it's like, well, is that still German volume training? It's like, yeah, I guess if you call it German volume training, but he recognized that 10 by 10 is, it's just too much. I uh, feel like I've never done 10 by 10, um, but I so the person I associate with doing 10 by 10 and the people I've been around that have done it are like 19 year old boys who are also doing the go mad challenge, mm. uh, a gallon of milk a day. And uh, that's what they're doing Yeah, until they just can't anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I did this uh, the last time I did it. No, that'd be a lie. The The most memorable time I did it was, uh, it was in Afghanistan. Yeah. We were on deployment and just like, what else do you do? Yeah. Just a bunch of 10 by 10. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you have nothing else to use your body for. Yeah, just trash be, it in the gym. Yeah. Ready to, uh, <laughs> be in action when yeah, you need to. Yeah, we were like the worst fighters. <laughs> no, we, we survived it. Um, but yeah, 10 by 10, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't like it. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, for beginners where, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it's, great way to get uh beginners a lot of volume it's like no do three sets right yeah. it's like you can you can do that without going being so polarized and then for advance it doesn't make any sense um i can see some uh, validity in using some of poliquin's methods in the advanced uh gvt just to get um an adequate amount of sets in but even in that i would say uh do the same muscle groups or patterns multiple times per week to get those sets in. Don't try to fit it all in on one day. For sure. Let's go to something that feels a little bit more comfortable, which is a five by five. I feel like anyone who's lifted for some period of time has been through five by five. So essentially you're using the five reps times five sets scheme uh, for compound movements. Yeah. Uh, intention here is to build strength in compounds by adding load each training session. So this is like the old, like, you know, someone's first begins lifting and they want to get strong. It's like, you know, they, they Google how to get strong and five by five comes up and they run a five by five program and they're adding five pounds, 10 pounds every week. And they do that for a good amount of time until it stops working. Um, but the, the, the exit in execution, it's five by five in every exercise, um, except for the deadlift. Um, and the reason why you're not doing five by five in the deadlift is just a lot of, uh, it's a lot of, it's a lot of volume and intensity. Um, you're adding load each sec session, obviously, and, uh, you're usually squatting each session as well. And you're alternating pressing exercises. Um, so it's a uh, row and, uh, you're, you're alternating the, uh, bench press and the strict press. And you're also alternating the row and the deadlift every other session. I'm guessing you've been through a five by five or two um, in your time. I've never done, I've never done like a true five by five mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. So, um, cause it's more of like a novice, yeah. it's more of a novice. Um, I've never been a novice now <laughs> when I first got into lifting. Um, I just didn't get into that. Right. Like I got into lifting through, uh, bodybuilding, right. I was like bodybuilding as like a 13 year old. And then by the time I like seriously got into lifting as like, uh, uh, for, to increase strength, um, we had a, we had a solid, uh, strength conditioning coach. Um, I wouldn't even call him a strength conditioning coach. We had a solid coach that knew a lot about strength conditioning and at our high school. And, uh, he ran us through some, some, uh, some pretty smart progressions. Um, as like a 17, 18 year old ran through that. And then by the time I got to college, uh, like five by five, wasn't like, <laughs> that's not what, what we were doing, um, at our program. So, uh, I kind of missed, I missed the whole five by five oh. thing. So I've never actually done it. Oh, I, w I was telling you, I've uh, I've been through five by five a bunch of times, but I've never done it with a row. I've always done it with a weighted chin up. Mm -hmm. um, so just slight variation, but similar because you're goes. advanced. That's it. That's that's <laughs> it. When I was a novice, I was doing the advanced uh, program. I got strong as hell doing it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a t like for, I guess especially for like a, a female client, like it's not a ton of volume, mm -hmm. right? But it's it's a good amount where you can lift relatively heavy loads and you're not just doing it for three sets yep. you know you're mm -hmm. getting those like five five sets in squatting three times a week like i, I got strong doing yeah. this 
Yeah, it's great for yeah, it's great for a novice because they they can so clearly see on a week to week basis like because for 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 someone else that's not seeing that linear progression, they're like, this is boring, right? But for a novice where they're like, man, I'm getting strong and I'm putting on size, it's like, I'm going to continue to do this until it stops working for me, which makes a lot of sense for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, uh, just like any other program for all the successes, you see way more fails with the program. But I think it's a, a, a really solid program for someone to for someone that's getting into lifting just to experience and get into definitely what do you think about squatting three times a week uh do you think that that is sustainable at like a again five by five type uh approach uh, depends on who you are uh but for a novice yeah for sure yeah for a novice for sure um because in and obviously in the five by five program they're using percentages uh but those percentages for a novice aren't real percentages um I don't love it for someone that's actually like expressing, um, depending on who they are. If it's someone that's like, I need to fucking get strong. It's like, okay, cool. Do your thing. But for, uh, uh an everyday person walking around, I just don't think there's any need to do that. Um, if I was going to squat three days a week with a general person, I'd, I'd, I'd change like the intentions of those squats on those three days, right? Like I'd put some barriers on one day. I'd go heavy one day. Um, you know, one day I might just be doing uh, leg extensions instead of squats. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think it's great. And I don't think it's the worst thing in the world either. For sure. Yeah. I think like I just asked that question because I'm reflecting on the designs I do these days for gen pop clients and none of them are like truly squatting three days a week. Mm -hmm. Like they may have a front squat and a back squat or like two back squat days, one higher intensity, one lower intensity, but none of them are doing like linear across the week five by five back squats yeah it's just it's it's performance right it's like it's, it's how you get stronger uh frequency like high frequency squatting uh to a degree uh is better than low frequency frequency squatting if the goal is to maximally uh get better at squatting um so i say to a degree because you know we talk about 10 years ago where you know everybody was squatting every day um and none of those people are still squatting yeah, every day. They're not with their squatting. <laughs> I'm not going to say any names, but there's some people that were like day 385 and it's like they're they're not squatting every day anymore. No, I, I don't even think they're squatting. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, you can overdo it of course, but um yeah, like if I saw a program and I saw someone squatting three times a day with like varied intensities, um it's it's really clear in what they're trying to do, right? Like they're trying to um you know put put a decent amount of load on the on the back and and just like grind through and get stronger one day on another day they they might be working on like uh not technique but like speed through concentrics and on another day they're just like trying to get more volume through frequency and so they'll put a limitation there so it's really clear when you see those programs what they're trying to do um and you know i still work with a couple people where we're squatting three th two three four times a week actually um not that the, the, I'm not trying to say like the programs are perfect, but there's intentions behind why that's being done. For sure. But generally most people don't need to squat three times a week. Let's uh, wrap it up with our five, three, one. Uh, so powerlifting program by Jim Wendler. Uh, I've done five, three, one a lot of times. Yeah. How about you? Um, never done five, three, one. Never. Mm -mm. No, these, these like last two are the ones that like were in the forefront when I was yeah. coming up in my early days of building strength. But um, talk, talk to us a little bit about yeah. what the intentions are. Uh, so goal here is to slowly build strength through the squat bench and deadlift. And the, the goal is it's very, it's, it's clear in the program. The goal is to improve your one rep max. Um, and this one's very similar to five by five in terms of, uh, you know, if we were to say like, who does it, who is it going to be really effective for? It's going to be really effective for, um, novice going into intermediate five, three, one will not be effective for someone that has never lifted before. Right. Because in the ones, what are they really doing? And the threes, what are they really doing? So, um, five by five, where five by five can be really effective for like that true newbie. Um, five, three, one just wouldn't be as effective because they really can't express it. So it's a four week cycle. Um, three sets of five, three sets of three, uh, five, three, one D load, test your one rep max. For sure. And then the final set is the plus, right? The Where plus you just kind of yeah, grind yeah. it out for as mm -hmm. long as you can on that last set. Yeah. I, I enjoyed the plus a lot. Yeah. Uh, I like that feeling. Yeah. So yeah, never done it. Um, 
I've never given it before. Um, given things that have the same idea behind it in progression. Um, but yeah, solid, solid powerlifting program for like people just getting into powerlifting. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, how does one decide what the best rep scheme is for their clients that are sitting in front of them? I know we've laid out some examples, yeah. 20 reps, five, three, one, five by five. How do you make the call? What is right for me? What is right for my client? <sighs> You just gotta, you just gotta feel it out, Georgia. No, we just did a what a fifty-minute, forty-minute somewhere, yeah. somewhere around there mm -hmm. conversation on Learn RX, and we we broke down different rep ranges uh, that you know marry up well with uh, with these programs. So we went uh, one to three, and then we went three to six, six and then we went five to ten, and then we went ten to twenty, and then we went twenty plus. So we kind of dug into, you know, what contraction types um, are utilized inside of those rep ranges. What are some pros inside of those rep ranges? What are some cons inside of those rep ranges? We gave some sample programs. We gave uh, a mistake that someone might use when utilizing those rep ranges. Uh, so we went pretty deep there. So I think that would be a, a pretty good start. I would say, I think one of the most common questions I get from people who are like interested about fitness and like want my coaches you know two cents on it is like what is the best rep range for blah so mm -hmm. if you guys go ahead click the link in the description uh go ahead and subscribe to learn rx to access that uh subscriber only content you're gonna have a really good answer for that question next time a client or a friend or a family member comes to you and wants to know so again by the end of that conversation you should feel very well equipped to be able to answer that question and when you sit down to write a program you're going to know why you're choosing to 12s versus sixes versus ones versus 18s and so on and so forth so would love you guys to check that out again click the link in the description to uh go and watch that uh intention-based rep ranges backroom talk episode on learn rx anything else you want to leave the people with uh no what rep range are you living in right now oh at the moment i'm living in i just transitioned down to six to eights which I would live there forever. I love sixes. Yeah. Like six six to eight reps, that's a very happy place for nice. me. Where, where are you at? Uh I'm in I'm I'm ten to twenties right now. Yeah. Yeah, ten to twenties. I love ten to twenties. You love you'd stay there? Uh for an amount of time, then I'll go down. Okay. But yeah, it's it's a it's a good place for now. Indeed. I love all rep ranges. Uh, all equally. rep ranges are oh, I don't love a one to three. Let's let's uh, be honest. Yeah, that's true. I used to love a one to three, but those days are behind me. That's true. Depends on the exercise. Like, uh, I love a one to three if it's like a weighted pull up. I was thinking the same <laughs> thing. <laughs> Way more than tens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but not a, not a squat these days. I don't love a one to three on a squat. I'm no. just like, oh, God, I feel bad for myself. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's, it's a mess. Well, guys, make sure you leave us a review, like, and subscribe. Again, if you're on audio, we are back on video now on YouTube. So uh, make sure you tune in next time to uh, watch it on YouTube or just go watch the conversation on YouTube again because uh we know you want to do that and leave some comments maybe right like maybe yeah. we can maybe we can talk to people we'd like to connect yeah. so yeah. uh reach out leave a comment leave a review uh we appreciate you guys see you next week see you